Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Bald, Beautiful, Bold, Molly B's Alopecia Journey on Inspirational Wednesday. I guess you guys know that we are wrapping up November. And like I told you last week, we are back again with Mr. Gregory McCord. Thank you so much for being back with us, Gregory. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I am so happy. I was so excited about what we discussed on last week. But I want to, you know, before we get started, you guys already know what we do. We share. I want you to just share. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not even about my dear friend, Mr. Gregory, but it's about our family and friends. Oftentimes, they may not even get to hear this platform unless you share it. So I am thankful for you doing that from week to week. I want to also uh, give a the uh, shout out to, you know, always give a shout out to my sponsors. This month's sponsor is none other than Sweets by LaDonna Ellerton. This chickadee right here is rocking it, you guys. She has a special going on with every purchase. She is giving away a dozen of her gourmet Oreo cookies for half price. So, you know, this is a this is holiday. So I'm, I'm letting you guys know to get ready for her. You, you can reach her at 615 8097162. I want to thank you guys for that to for uh soaring into her journey. A lot of you guys know that in order to reach me, you can reach me on Facebook. I am global, YouTube, just click in Molly V's Alopecia Journey, uh, Instagram me, DM me, whatever you need to do, even snail mail at Molly Vaughn PO Box 344, uh Laverne, Tennessee, 37086. But I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on uh, you know, different things, but, but I want to make sure I get going with Mr. Gregory, but I always like to give you guys the purpose of this platform. And the purpose of this platform is to inspire and empower individuals like yourselves, like what we're going to be doing today, to be strengthened by your own testimonies versus being weakened by your experiences. And I just want you to understand that this is the time for us to be strengthened. We are ending November, but we are ending strong. But let me get you in going with, with our instructor. I am so happy again to have uh, Gregory back. He said he was going to be back in, in living color. There he is. So I'm thankful for him. But let me tell you guys a little bit about him again. I know I may have some new viewers this week. So you may have not heard his bio from last week. So let me tell you a little bit about our, our speaker for today. Again, his name is Gregory L. McCord. He earned his Georgia real estate and instructor license in 2019. He is the broker and owner of Lamar Real Estate Group, LLC. And also Gregory owned and operated several successful tax businesses in DeKalb County, Georgia, for 15 years. So we just thank you and, and uh, we applaud you, Gregory, for your accomplishment. We thank God for the work that you have done in the city of, uh, of Atlanta. So but when we get started, uh, Gregory, let's, let's get started on this. We're just going to pick up on where we left off last week because I want to make sure that you get uh, your coverage in and be able to uh, let the people know what, what it takes for this particular uh, field they want to venture into it. So looking back, uh, Gregory, name two best practice tips that you can give someone who is pursuing a career as a real estate instructor. Two best practice tips. First of all, thank you, Molly. Uh, uh, it is my pleasure to be back with you. Uh, one of the first tips that I would give in someone who's desiring to be a real estate instructor is that you have to know your trade. You have to know your trade. This is a profession that if you don't know the material, you're not going to be a very successful real estate instructor. You must know the material. Also, you must have that desire to where you know where you're going, and you know where you're headed. Uh, you have to uh, be able to come up with your own systems, your, your testing, create your own curriculum, so you have to be strong in that area. And let me ask you this, Gregory. I like those two tips because those tips, not only can they be used in uh, your field, but I use them with what I'm, I do as well. But let me expound on, if you can expound a little bit on knowing your trade. Exactly. Can you just give more insight on that? As a real estate instructor, for me, I've heard that when, uh, when before I decided to become a real estate instructor, I heard some other instructors say, everyone is not an instructor. 
And I couldn't quite understand the reason why they say that. But once you get into the business, you realize uh, why they say make, make that particular state statement. In order to be a successful instructor, you must start at the bottom, which means that you need to learn uh, you need to learn the sales the uh, the sales part, mm -hmm. the sales pre license. And in order to understand the sales pre license, you must have a you must have a good understanding about the sales of real estate. I've been in real estate before I got my instructional license for over fifteen years. So I came in with a good, with, with, with a very good foundation, which helped me when I got into the uh, to, to the instructor side. It was matter of just a matter of putting pulling all of my resources together as far as my entrepreneurship, my uh, the, what I learned in tech technology, and also my teaching skills. That is what made me be where I am today as far as being a very productive real estate in um, an instructor. You know, and I can appreciate that because um, I'm hearing a lot of, of training. You, you, you started from the bottom. So therefore, uh, a lot of times when people start from the bottom, I know in different areas, they would be able to understand how to teach from every level. Because as, as it is in your occupation, as, as I've experienced with the different areas that I have uh, uh, been working with, I learned that uh, I didn't get this where I am just yesterday. It was a process. Right. And in doing this process, how can you say to someone how important it is to be, we talked about this last week, but how important it is to be disciplined for one, if you could speak to that, and if it's necessary to be mentored, uh, to have someone along the way that they can they may not want to talk to you directly as an instructor because I don't want you to know what I'm really weak on. But is there someone else that they may have that may have an ear to help them along the way? What do you think about that? Well, speaking from my personal experience, is that when you talk about a mentor, throughout my whole career, uh, I did accounting and taxes and own and I owned several tax offices and sold those offices offices to H and R Block when I went into corporate. I've, I've, I've never had I never had a mentor. I was surrounded by good people, mm -hmm. and I observed what they were doing, and I took the good and discarded the bad. So, with me, it just came about. To, I know where I wanted to go. I know where I wanted to be. So when I became a real estate instructor, I came with a lot of good qualities. Mm -hmm. I'd been around some good people. Mm -hmm. And even and even today, the systems that I have implicated in my own school, it would have taken someone years to do that. But it but it only has taken me two and a half years. You have to really keep your head down, stay focused, <laughs> stay on track. You can't be distracted by what's going on. Be concerned about what who's doing what. You got to know what 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 your target is. And stay focused because I believe I hear a lot of people say, what's for me is for me. And I believe that my time will come. I may not be where I want to be right now, but I know that if I stay focused and stay committed to the cause, I'll get to where I want to be. Um, you know, I am amazed at, and, and I just say that with all humbleness, because in every segment or every podcast, Gregory. I go before God and I say, Lord, I need you to speak a word for this, for this segment that will attach to it. And you, again, will be exceedingly surprised at the exact thing that the Lord gave for this section or this segment, okay? So I smile because oftentimes when we uh, venture into an area and we ask for directions, sometimes, and I, can't, I can speak for me, I say, God, are you sure? Is this what you want? The Lord always sent a confirmation. So listening to what you said and how you expounded, Gregory, uh, on the question that I asked you, you gave confirmation to what the Lord has given for the, for the inspiration today. So I'm so excited. So let me ask you this. How do you measure success as a real estate instructor? 
what are your, what do you measure? How do, what's your measurement? What does your ruler look like? Or how do you gauge that? That's a very good question. And as I tell my students, first of all, I realize that my main purpose when I sit before a, a group of students is that I have to give 100% and more. Mm -hmm. I have to do that. My goal is to get those students from point A to point B, which means that I've got to make sure that I set the standards because that although we're in class and we're in a class learning to become realtors, one thing that I bring into my class is that you're going to get some of that real life experience while mm -hmm. you're so we're just not going to do the book, the, the, uh, just, just the book knowledge. So for me, every student in that class, I owe them my best. Mm -hmm. They know people that I don't know. And all that they know about me when they come in that class and leave of that class is what they see while they were in that class. So I need to be on top of my game. 24 seven. You know, in hearing what you're saying, I'm hearing taking ownership. Right, you have to. Taking ownership, not only for uh, knowing what God has placed in you and your strengths, but I'm hearing that you're taking ownership of the, the people ears that's sitting in your class. You're taking, because if God is allowing you to stand before, even now this podcast, However many is going out, I, as well as yourself, we are taking ownership of what we are saying is true. We are taking ownership that we respect and we want to make sure that what we give, we give our best. Exactly. And I am so proud to hear you say that because I have been in classes where I didn't feel that. And you can tell when someone is not given that or taking ownership because you're not being, it's not being reciprocated, okay? Yes. And it's easy to find that. Yes. So I applaud you for first acknowledging that I'm not taking this lightly. I know that uh, you are giving up not only your time, but you're giving, giving up funds. Exactly. So I wanna make sure that when you leave your school, that you're gonna be equipped because what's gonna happen, Gregory? When I when they leave your school, where did you go to school? Who taught you? Exactly. So, exactly. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So you're being represented. Exactly. You're being represented in so many ways. And, and that's how come I take very careful thought in whom that I bring on my podcast. Because I want to make sure that the information is being transparent. Yes. Because, because number one, the reason why I felt to bring you on, Gregory, is because I have a daughter who is interested and a nephew who's interested in real estate. And of course, I am not only just speaking to them, but I'm speaking to the masses. So I, I, you know, I reached out to uh, my dear friend, Pearl, yes. and she is going to be coming on in another fashion. But she said, you know what? I got the best guy that could teach this, that could bring this message in. And uh, family, you don't know this, but this is my first time honestly seeing Gregory. But as as the Lord has always done, we I have never met a stranger. <laughs> exactly. So good. I am I'm I'm happy to hear you say that you take ownership. And let me ask you this: I love asking certain questions in the different uh, in different fields, but this one particularly for you. One main thought to remember is, I want you to think about this. If you had to, at the end of the day, at graduation, I don't know how long your uh, courses are, how long it takes, okay? But when the student comes to graduate and they have finished their course, if you could say, all that I've taught you, I want you to take this one thing away. What is, name that key takeaway that a person would need as they venture to becoming a real estate instructor? Only one? Okay, Greg, I know you. I'm gonna give you two. Okay, give me two. <laughs> give me two. The thing that I would tell an individual who has passed, come through my class and passed my class and 
I am, I would be so proud of them. The first thing that I would say is never lose who you are. Never lose who you are. Second, a desperate agent is no good to anybody, which means that we don't chase dollars. Mm -hmm. I chasing dollars. A desperate agent, if you get into this business and you're chasing dollars, you're no good to your client and you're no good to yourself because you're going to sell your client out and you're going to sell yourself out to do a deal to try to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. So you got to know who you are. Yes. To this business. You can't fall. I don't care who who's on selling L.A. or selling New York. You got to know who you are. You got to have some principles and you got to have you got to have some ethics here in this profession because you won't stay long. And that's great advice because I like the one that you said, never lose who you are. I don't care how, and this is something that I've heard as a child, you know, our mamas or our grandparents told us, no matter how high you get, boy, girl, don't forget where you come from. Exactly. Never lose your teaching, never lose your ethics, your what made you, your morals. I tell my daughters that. So I'm so I'm, I'm happy to hear that at this level. And I like when you said, don't be desperate. Don't, God will make room for you. Always. There is what, and, and you know, you made the statement earlier, what's for me is for me. I don't care if I get there late or you get there early. That's right. That's mine and that's yours. And we have to be able to acknowledge that and accept that for one. And that way we won't be stepping over each other because there is room for everyone. And you said something always, I promise you that. Because each one of us are still here because we have a purpose. I am a purpose-driven person, uh, Gregory. And I believe that uh, everyone has that. But we have to see God for our purpose. So I am very much appreciative of that. Um, principles, keeping your principles, your morals and your values. I'm very appreciative of that. So that was great. And, and the last question that I want to ask you um, is that this was a two-part question from last week. Last week, I asked you, um, the first part of it. So this week, I'm going to ask you this part, uh, Gregory. If you could speak to yourself in the future going forward, if you could, what could you, what would you say to you in your future if you could speak to you? Honestly? Yes. If I could speak to myself today to into the future moving forward, I would tell myself, to remain like I am today, because I am so focused. I am so focused, which means that I'm not pulled in a lot of different areas. I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I know where I want to be. I am, I am going, I want to be the same, if anything, I want to be the same person that I am today, with the same morals, the same principles, Say so as I get old, I am I am in my 60s now, so it's not much, too too many changes, too uh, you know not many changes that that I really want to do, or actually see. But if I had to answer that question today, I am pretty comfortable with where I am today, and I can take where I am today and move forward. And you know, again, uh, I like that because being rooted basically in, in remaining uh, in a place where, you know, this is the vein that I'm traveling in. This is the vein that the Lord has called me in. And not only are you remaining focused on where your calling is, but you are in the process of continually helping others to come to. And that's what remaining, you know, staying, you know, keeping a, a stronghold, keeping a foot down so that you can be able to tap back and say, hey, look, I'm right here, but I need you to come on, exactly. you know, so that's, it, it, it's been a pleasure to, uh, to speak with you. And you know, the thing about it, Gregory, and like I told you in, in each segment, um, I always like to pray about the topic. 
And you were very so you 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 keyed in and you were very profound and precise in, in, in what you were saying. So in order, so this is a great segue into um, the inspiration. I told you that, that this was such a perfect uh, theme that the Lord had given me. And the theme, uh, Gregory, for today is stay focused. Exactly. Can you believe it? Yes. And I, I'm so happy for that because <clears throat> the word that the Lord has given me, he gives me a, a metaphor and it's like putting on a new outfit. Each morning we get up and get a new outfit. We get another outfit, maybe whether it be brand new or, but it's another outfit. And today's outfit for this segment, it, it comes out of Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man, and I just want to interject, not to take away, but to add, a good woman, are ordered by the Lord. Amen. And he delights in his way. Well, Gregor, I don't know about you, but there are times that I get distracted. Being honest, I get distracted. Sometimes it could be a big distraction, and sometimes it could be rather a small distraction. Either way, I found myself out of focus. This passage of scripture rested upon me when I questioned why I am being distracted. Often the very reason you are being distracted is the very thing that really distracted you. Mm -hmm. When God gives a new outfit, it is always on time. That means it lets me know that whenever, I call it a new outfit, but whenever the Lord speaks a word, whatever we're going through at that time, it's always on time. It is needed for that season, or it's also needed for you as you travel on that journey. This word came at the precise time of celebrating Thanksgiving. We understand that things or circumstances get in the way, but God is reminding us to stay focused. God knows what it takes for me to stay focused, and he knows what it takes for you to stay focused. He reminds me of my to-do list. And you guys, just the mere mention of my list just takes me to a total different place. But this is how he deals with me when I get distracted. I had to laugh at God because at some point, I had begun to reminisce about something in my past, and it made me sad. And I got so quiet within myself, then I heard a small voice that reminded me of Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a good man, a good woman, are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. I answered that voice, and I said, but God. And each time that I said, but God, the, the more I said, but God, the voice was no longer small, but now it was beginning to get loud. God was letting me know, I need you to stay focused. What am I saying? Even if you must repeat the scripture out loud to yourself, stay focused. Know that the work that God has called you to do, the work that he has begun in you, he will allow it to be completed. Why? Because if you will, if you only stay focused. Yes. Family, be proud of yourself while being thankful and knowing that you have come a long ways. You come a long ways again because you remain focused. And prepare for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Wear this new outfit. The new outfit is Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Family, this ends our guest for the month of November. Tomorrow's a day that we set aside to be thankful, and it is just happened to be a holiday. So tomorrow, while staying focused, when remembering what you are thankful for, start out saying, I am thankful for. Now you do the rest. You add in whatever you're thankful for. Thank you again, Gregory, for being a part of my November podcast. Thank you. And I, I know you didn't, you didn't think I forgot. Tomorrow is your birthday. Yes, it is. Well, happy birthday in the tune of Stephen Wonder, okay? Thank you, beautiful. Well, beautiful. I just thank you. I, I, I am so appreciative of you, your, your wonderful smile and your beautiful um, your giving and, and giving information to, to, to God's people. Thank you, Mom. This has just been a blessing, and I thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I also wanted you guys, my family, to join me next week 
on Ball, Beautiful, Bold, Molly V's Alopecia Journey on Inspirational Wednesday for a different kind of podcast. It is our Christmas month, so we will be blessed with some anointed ministers that will share the Lord with us in a very special way. The December flyer, flyer will be coming out soon. So again, I just want to give shout outs to my November sponsor, Sweet Battle Donna Ellerton. She is ready and willing to give you uh, half off on any purchase that you make in the month of November. She extended that offer again for November. You can reach her at 615-809-7162. Again, I want to thank you for reaching out to me every week and, and giving me your constructive and encouraging uh, feedback. It has just been a blessing. I just started in, in July. And look at it. God has already continually opened doors. Thank you so very much. We will see you again next week. In the meantime, have a happy Thanksgiving. Gregory, eat as much as you want. It's your birthday. Thank you, Molly. God bless you. Thank you so very Thank you so much. And we'll see you next month. Get ready. Because this is another time that the Lord is going to be blessing. But enjoy Thanksgiving. Remember, stay Focused. Yes. yes.